crossroad in this place and in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, if there's anything, God, that's, that's not of you, God, let it be God in Jesus' name. Lord, I ask for healing, God, for people that need healing this morning, God. I ask for comfort for people that need comfort, God. I ask for strength for people that just feel weak this morning, God. I ask for encouragement, Lord, for people that feel hopeless this morning. I ask, Lord, for courage when people feel fear. This morning, Lord, let faith arise in this place, God. We know that your presence is here, Lord, and in your presence there's fullness of joy. There's perfect peace. There's the fullness of life. So I ask, Lord, that even as we are in your presence, Lord, that we would experience that fullness of life.
change our perspective in certain things, Lord. There's, there's something that you've got planned for us this morning, Lord. And, and we want to thank you for your presence that is here, Lord, that we can hear straight from your heart, God. You are right here, Lord. Come and speak to our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Take your seats. <clears throat> it's always a privilege being here with you and uh, and being able to share God's word and being able to worship with you. I, I I always find the privilege to be able to worship with people and different people. Uh, uh, it's something that we'll do for for all of eternity. And we get a little bit of a taste of it while we're here, and uh, and it's 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 always just just so good. I want to speak this morning a little bit about God's word, and uh, I look around here and I see uh, uh, veterans in God's word. You probably, or all of you, probably have spent at least about uh, 30, 40, 50 years in the Word of God, and um, and. Um, and studying the Word of God. And God just laid this on my heart, and I want to share with you. And uh, I think sometimes as mature believers, we, come, uh, uh, we become a little bit lazy in our study of the Word. And uh, so we, we, we still believe the Word of God. We still read it openly. I see there's a few notes. Hopefully we still read that. <laughs> uh, but... But we become a little bit lazy because we've got revelation from sermon after sermon. We've got revelation of hours and hours of spending time in God's Word and speaking to the average human being. You've uh, you've uh, you've actually got a lot to speak about because you've spent 50 years in um, in the Word already, and you can talk about things and all that. But uh, it's almost as if uh, we 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 become a little bit lazy and we stop digging in to get the treasure that is actually in the Word of God. So this morning is more of, a, of an encouragement to dig deep, to go searching for those treasures that are in God's Word and don't get lazy and don't get satisfied with what you have because there's so much more that, that, that is in there. I, I know that you guys have been going through the book of Romans. Uh, how many of you, maybe don't put up your hands, have read through the book of Romans since we've started this whole thing? I see there was a secret hand there. Uh, and uh, Romans, I think, if you were to read through it just in one sitting, would probably take you about, what would you say, an hour, an hour and a half. But, but two longer, hours. Longer for me, possibly. Two hours, two and a half hours. But max, maybe three hours to read through the whole book of Romans, like you were to read through one of those story books that you like to read. Uh, but I want to encourage you, don't just read. It's good to read. We need to be reading. But go deeper and search. Um, I'm reminded of that parable that Jesus talks about, that, that woman that lost that coin. And, uh, you know, I've always been told in my life that, that I look like a man. You know? <laughs> because uh, <laughs> I, I look like a man. But, uh, you know, I, I, I will go and I need to get the tomato sauce. And I open the fridge, and I'm like, Judy, where's the tomato sauce? And she's like, it's right in front of your eyes. And I'm like, I don't see the tomato sauce. And then she comes, and she reaches in, and it's right there in front of my eyes. And I missed it somehow. But put me in the Kruger Park. I can see that leopard that's far away. And everyone's like, what is that? You know, it's, 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 it's just a thing of perspective. But there was this lady that lost that coin. And she searched her house, and I'm thankful that she did not look like a man. Otherwise, she would have just dusted here and dusted there, and oh, the coin must be gone, someone must have stolen it. So many times we treat the Word of God like that. We quickly dust there, dust there, do this and do that, and then we carry on with life, and we miss the treasure that is there. That woman goes, and I'm sure she unpacked her whole house. And she looked for that coin. And when she found that coin, she didn't just be like, oh, yeah, it is back in my purse. No, she's like, friends, family, come over. We're going to celebrate. I found that coin. There's a joy that comes 
when you find the treasure that God has for you. And the Bible should be like that. It should be like that treasure that, that, that we get to find. There's a very well-known scripture that I'm sure all of you can quote, Hebrews 4 verse 12. And I just want to read that first part of the verse. For the word of God is alive and active. The word of God is alive and active. It wants to come and it wants to work in your life and transform everything about you. It wants to transform the way that you think. It wants to transform the way that you live. It wants to transform the way that you experience life. It, it, it wants to come in and it works. Once you've got the Word of God in you, it starts to work and it starts to challenge things. And then we don't like it so much. And then we're like, let me just ignore that for a little bit. But it comes in and it starts to challenge things and it, and it starts to do things and it brings encouragement. And you, you know, you're in, in the darkest hour that you're in and the Word of God comes in and for some reason there's hope. And it's like, just five minutes ago, I had no hope. But all of a sudden, I have hope. Why? Because the Word of God is alive and it's active. And we need to get the Word of God into us. So I want to share just uh, something practically with you this morning that's, that you can do. And uh, are there any English teachers in this place? Do any of you know what an acrostic is? An acrostic. What is an acrostic? It's um, the first letter of a, a word in a sentence. Can we put that together and it forms another word? Okay, so we have a word and each of those letters represent a different word. And you guys probably know what I'm talking about. You just didn't know it was called an acrostic. I just wanted to seem very clever this morning. <laughs> I, I had to learn that first uh, as well, just, uh, just the other day. So this acrostic is not my own. Uh, I've heard it from various other pastors and whatever, but it is really good. So an acrostic to studying the Word of God. And this is basically just something that's challenging you. Don't become lazy. Don't just settle for the Word of the day. Don't just settle for, I'm going to quickly read this and quickly read that, and then I'm going to carry on with my life. We need to be diligent, and we need to be studying the Word of God. So the acrostics is the word maps, because the Bible is like a map for us. It, um, it guides us. So the word M-A-P-S, and each of those letters will stand for something. So the first thing with the Word of God, when you're studying it, the M stands for meditate and memorize. Now, some of you are probably thinking, like, why should I be memorizing the Word of God? Let me tell you something. It's one of the most amazing things when you start to memorize and meditate on the Word of God. And for some of you, like, yeah, but I can't. Just spend the 5, 10, 15, an hour, whatever it takes <coughs> to memorize that verse. And just take one verse a week even, if it is, and memorize it and get it a part of you. It will change you. We've, we've lost that thing of, of, of memorizing, that discipline. I'm going to call it the discipline of memorizing. You know, when, when you look at Jewish students and when you hear about how they had to uh, be able to recite the Torah and, um, and all that, and, and, and how it was just a part of them. You see David writing the Psalms. You see the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible, in his Psalms. It's coming out in the songs that he's writing, or whatever. Why? Because he knew it. He had it in his, in, in his mind, in his heart. He had it memorized. He had meditated on it. He could take that further and it became a part of his life. I will never forget the story of this American pastor that went over to China and he's busy teaching some, some uh, Chinese leaders there. And in the room of the Chinese leaders that were there, and it was a really, really hot day, no aircon, nothing. But he's busy teaching these Chinese leaders, and they represent, I think it was something like about uh, uh, six million people that were represented by the leaders uh, in that meeting. And he starts and he says, we're going to look at the book of First Peter. And he sees this lady pass some papers to someone else. So he asks his interpreter, well, what, what's going on here? And he's like, no, she's memorized that portion of scripture. Really. She doesn't need that. The other person needed that to be able to read from it. And it, it challenges me. And it's like, we become so reliant, reliant on the physical word, which is not a bad thing. I, I think it's great that we have the physical word. Mm -hmm. But we don't really have it in our hearts the way we need to have it in our hearts. 
by meditating and memorizing, you can get it a part of your life. So take a verse, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16, I think it is. It says, rejoice always. Is it 17? Rejoice always. I'm sure all of you can memorize that scripture. Is it 16? I was right. (laughs) And then 17 is pray without ceasing. Is that right? Those are two verses that you've all just memorized. Rejoice always. And then you memorize that and you start to meditate on it. And you just like, what does it mean to rejoice always? Does it mean that I always need to be laughing? Or is it something deeper than that? And then you start to think about it and you start to ask Ian, Ian, what does it mean to rejoice always? Like, how do I rejoice always? Because sometimes things happen in my life and people don't treat me well. How can I rejoice in that? And so we start talking about it. We start thinking about it. And it starts to become a part of your life. I think one of the worst things that we do as believers is we read the Word of God and then we carry on with our lives and we don't even think about what we just read. You know? The Word of God is alive and active. Start to think about it. So, the M for maps starts for meditate and memorize. Then we have the, the, the letter A, which is apply. We need to actually apply the Word of God to our lives. The Word of God is living and active, and it needs to work in our lives. So, we need to apply it to our lives. But this is where it becomes quite tricky, actually. Because you have some people that like to be like, well, that scripture doesn't apply to me because it's Old Testament. Or that scripture doesn't apply to me because, well, that's for, for so and so. And this, I know that Rose is struggling with this, so that applies to her. And, uh, and we apply everything to everyone else in the world, or we just like, oh, that just doesn't apply because that's too old school or whatever it is. Uh, and, uh, but we need to allow the Word of God to change us. When we ever we want to apply the Word of God to our lives, we are not trying to justify our way of living and trying to find a way around where it says, love your enemies, and you're like, yeah, but what does that really mean? You know, surely Jesus doesn't want me to actually do good to the person that's done very, very bad to me. You know, surely not. You know what I mean? So we try and work around and we're like, yeah, but in, in my heart I've forgiven them. You know, and whatever. But all your actions and stuff, don't, 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 don't talk about that. You just haven't applied the Word of God. You've just put something into the Word of God that has made it not applicable to you. And you've taken the power away from the Word of God. When you read the Word of God, you should ask yourself the question, Firstly, what did this mean to that audience that was spoken there? And that could be a whole topic in itself. But what is it saying? Not what do I want it to say to me. What is the Word of God actually saying? And then you take that and then you start to sometimes wrestle with these things. I know there's some scriptures that, that I even have to wrestle with. You, you, you're busy in your heart and in your mind and in your studies you're busy taking it and you're just like yeah but this doesn't make sense and you go to another thing and uh, and you read what someone else said about it go to another scripture and you start to wrestle with it and then you speak to Ian about it and <laughs> and then you start to question about how can this be and how how does that work and and whatever and you wrestle with it but you say holy spirit i want what you what you meant for it to do in my life. Because if you don't do that, the Word of God has lost its power in your life. Not that it's lost its power, you just don't experience the power of God in your life. So we need to apply the Word of of God to our lives. We need to take a scripture like, what needs to change? How can I be transformed? What can I get from this that's going to really change? So the M is for meditate and memorize. The A is for apply. Then the P is for? People. People. Pray. 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 Learn to pray the Word of God. I found that this this is one of the things that has really uh, affected my prayer life in, um, in a very big way. Because you know... Uh, I'm not a man of many words 
uh, at the best of occasions. You know, you, you, uh, you hear me speak quite a lot, but it's because I've prepared, and I've prepared a whole bunch of words to say. But if you just talk to me, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy to, to sit in silence even with someone and whatever, and we go and we talk a little bit and whatever. Uh, but, and sometimes in prayer, I, I get to the point like, what, what, what do I say? You know, like, I've prayed my two minutes and I've gone, thank you Lord Jesus for this lovely day. Thank you that I'm alive. Thank you for this. Please help Ian give me some good advice. <laughs> Whatever we pray. And you know, two minutes can seem quite a long time for some people. And it's like, I've gone through everything. And then some of you are really uh, uh, clued up in this. And you've got a journal or a prayer list. And you've got a whole bunch of things that you pray through. And that's great because I can tell you the devil has an amazing way of when you sit down and pray like, what, what did I need to pray for again? And it's just wiped out of it. That's why a prayer list is so good because then you go through the prayer list and then you can pray for 10 minutes because now you've got a prayer list that you pray through and, and, yeah, and you can remember what you pray. But if you're like me, when you run out of words, and like, what do I pray? But the Bible says we just memorize that scripture, pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17. And I, but, but how do I do that? And one of the things that's really helped me is when you study the Word of God, to pray the Word of God. And I want to take you to Psalms 103. And, and this is a psalm that we actually use in Tuesday night's prayer meeting. And I want to just, maybe just bring you in, into a little bit of my prayer life. And give you a little bit of a taste of it. How you pray the Scripture and, and how you pray it back to God. Um, and Psalm 103 verse 1 says, Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise His holy name. Sure. First, praise. What, what, what does that actually mean? Praise. I, 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 I need to be in that place where, where, where there's actually glory going to God. And it could be that I'm speaking it. It could be that I'm thinking it. But it, it, it's coming from in me. And not just anywhere in me, all my inmost being. And I'm like, Lord, teach me how to praise with everything that's in me. And praise His holy name. I need to praise you because you are worthy. You are holy. What does that word holy mean? It means different. It's other than our God is a holy God. And, and I'm just like, I need to praise God for who He is. And everything within me, I need to pray, Lord, will you help me praise you more? When I have the opportunity and we get together with people, will you help me that I'm not so concerned about everyone else around me, but all of my inmost being, I praise you. And then you start to think about other scriptures and you start to think about David, how when he brought the Ark of the Covenant back into Jerusalem and he was praising in a way that, 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 that his wife here looked at him and was like, he's making a fool of himself. David's response is, I will become even more undignified than this because it's for my God. He's praising God with everything within him. Psalm 103 is a psalm of David. So we see it in his life. We read about it. And like, Lord, teach me how to praise you with everything that's in me. Then we go to the next verse. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. That's one of the reasons why I can praise God. It's because everything that He's done for me, I'm here, I've got health, I was able to walk in here this morning, I'm, I'm, I'm able to do this, I had food this morning, God willing, you ate breakfast before coming, but you know, I, I, I've got all these things, and God, you are so good, you give, me, you, uh, you give me wisdom for everything. Do you hear how you're starting to pray, and all you're doing is read the Word of God, but you're starting to pray it back to God. And as you do that, you meditating on the Word of God. You start to realize there's applications in there. Verse 3, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Thank you, God, that I can be your child. Thank you that you've forgiven me. And if there's any sin in my life that I still need to confess, that's, that's putting a wall between me and you, Lord, you see you pray through these things. And the Psalms is a very good place to start. Because these Psalms, that's basically what it is. It's a whole bunch of prayers. And you go through it and, and, um, and then it heals all your diseases. Lord, there's not one disease that is impossible for you to heal. There's not one thing that's impossible. 
So I stand on your word and I will praise you for that. And I won't just talk about it, but with everything within me, I will praise you for that. Verse 4, who, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Thank you, God, that you've taken me from the deepest place, the darkest place in my life where I thought I wouldn't make it, but you've lifted me up. I've heard it once said that I praise like I praise because I know where I was in that valley. So I can shout it out and no one can say anything because I know where I've been and I know what I've been saved from. Mm -hmm. And therefore I, I, can, I can praise God. And He crowns me with love and compassion. Wow. Then verse 5. You satisfy, who satisfies your desires with good things. We realize that every good gift is from God. And then for all of us here, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That's what God wants. Satisfying His desires for us. Yeah. Absolutely. What I'm saying is, now we're praying for it. Now we're thinking about it. Now we're praying it back to God. It becomes alive to you. And your prayer time can be really exciting. And your reading of the Bible can be really exciting. So, we've gone through M, memorize, meditate, A, apply, P, pray. I've just showed you a little bit about that. And then S. Anyone want to take a guess what S stands for? Yeah. Chair. Very good. Ah, oh, <laughs> Very, very good. Chair. And uh, because I have realized you learn a whole bunch more when you start to actually share it with other people. You know, as a, as a teacher, I'll, I'll give a little bit of uh, an example. So, uh, I'm a pianist, and I've played piano since I was about six years old. I went for lessons, learned how to play, and all that, and could play and heard, had many good teachers. And that, but I got to a point where I started to teach piano now to, to, uh, to other people. <coughs> and one thing I realized is, once you start teaching it, you start to realize what's actually going on. You know, you've always had someone telling you, do this, do that, do that, do that. Now all of a sudden you have to think about, why am I doing that? Because now, you know, the next generation is pretty smart, so they ask all the whys. But why do I have to do that? And whatever. And why do you play like that and not like that and all this and stuff? And you start, as you're teaching it, you actually becoming a lot better at it than what you have to teach them now technique. So I can't play with my bad habits and whatever. I need to change because I, I don't want to pass my bad habit on to the next person. So, so I, this is how you play and you start to refine your own skills while you teach it. It's the same thing with the Word of God. If you share it further, what you do, you don't want to pass your bad, well I trust that you don't want to pass your bad habits on. You know, but you start to talk about it and you start to, to, to pass it on to someone and then they start to ask questions. And they will ask questions that, they, that you never ever thought about asking. And then all of a sudden you can have an hour long conversation on who satisfies your desires with good things. And it's like, wow, this is really, really amazing. But what a lot of us do is what we've got into the habit because we call it our personal relationship with Jesus. I'm not against that statement because it is a personal relationship you have with Jesus. But you are saved into a family. And there has to be other people involved in your relationship with God. Otherwise you'll never grow. So what we do is, it's my personal relationship with God, so I take, I spend time with God, I journal, and I do this, and I do that. Thank you God for sharing your word with me, and you carry on the day. And you don't pass it on. Whereas you, missing out on the benefit of being able to share it. The person that you should have shared something with is missing out on the benefit of having heard. Bible tells us that we need to be making disciples. This is the perfect way how to make disciples. You just share what is God saying to you and then you share it on. If you're married or if you've got someone that's close to you, have a, like an accountability partner or whatever. Just say, listen, this is what
what I've read in the Word of God, and this is what, I, what, what, what God is busy telling me about it, and I'm so excited about it, and you start talking about it. If you've got no one to talk to about it, it's easy to go a day without having time with God. It's easy to not read the Word of God if there's not someone that's going to ask you, so, so what, what did you read about today? You know? Because you, 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 uh, you can lie about it for the first three weeks mm -hmm. and every day come up with some old revelation of like, oh yeah, I yeah, did this, this, this. But I tell you, you'll soon get to the end of that and you're like, I have to read the Word of God. I need something new because that person is going to bug me all day about that. <laughs> and whatever. We need to be able to share it on because also, it's one thing getting it in you it's another thing putting language to it to be able to share it out. So many times God will do something in you. And sometimes it takes a few days for you to get the language to be able to talk about what God has actually showed you. Because it's just so deep and, and, and you're just like, I, I, I don't know how to put this into words yet. But the more you meditate about it, the more you apply it and allow God to speak to you. Or you talk to someone else about it and you say... Like, yo, I, I, there's something about this. God has done something in me. I just don't know how to put it into words. And you start talking about it. It starts to become clear. Maps. Do not become lazy in your study of the Word. Maps is an easy way just to, just to start, just be more intentional about your study of the Word. Memorize and meditate. Take one verse. You don't have to take the whole chapter of Psalm 119 and think, I need to memorize this. Maybe one day you will get to that point where you take the whole chapter and you can memorize it and that's great and whatever. But you don't have to start there. Start by 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16, 17 and 18. Easy verses that you can just memorize. Rejoice always. Okay, you've all memorized that one. So that's a verse that's gone already. 17, pray without ceasing. It's a verse that's already memorized. Okay, I know those two. Third one, in every situation, give thanks because this is the will of God for your life. Okay, now you've memorized it. Make it a part of your life. Don't be lazy. Because if you're only going to read and then carry on with your life, you'll be, what, what did I read again? What was it? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'll just... I'll go back to it later, and then you probably don't. If you just spend the extra few minutes <coughs> memorizing, you'll be able to meditate about it. Then apply it to your life and ask the Holy Spirit, will you reveal to me and will you remind me about this? Meditate, memorize, apply, pray through it. Let this be your prayer manual. Let the Word of God be your prayer book. Where you go to and you're like, I, I, I don't know what to pray today. And you take a psalm or you take something else. There's, there's even the, uh, the, uh, the, the apostolic prayers of Paul that, that are found in, in, his, uh, uh, in his letters. And you go pray those things over your own life and over other people's lives. And you just take it. It's literal prayers that are in there that you can take and you can pray. It's the Word of God. And then share it. Don't just keep it to yourself. Share it further. You will grow and other people will grow. Don't be lazy in reading the Word of God. We want to go over to a time of communion because, you know, it's one thing to take the Word of God and read the Word of God. But Jesus has opened up a way where you can Give strength from the Father. The veil got torn so that you can get into the presence of God. And it's through what Jesus did on the cross for you. So when you read the Word of God, you don't have to read from some hallway out there, so far away that you just like, uh, I just wish I could understand this. I'm just thinking about that, that Ethiopian that's on his way and he's busy reading the book of Isaiah. And he's reading it and he's just like, I don't understand this. Philip comes along, he's a born again believer and he starts explaining to, to this Ethiopian and his eyes start opening and he believes. 
he can go through that veil, he can receive from God the revelation that God has for him, and he's like, I need to be baptized. And there's water there. You know? So they baptize him. You see, God has made a way for us that we don't have to read the Bible from the outskirts somewhere and hope that we can just get some sort of gem out there. He's saying, come into my presence. Sit right with me. And let me share my heart with you. That's His heart. And Jesus made that possible through His body that was broken and that His blood that was shed. So, as we remember that this morning, let it be something that inspires you and just like, I'm going to go home and when I've got some time, I'm going to go into the presence of God and I'm going to open this book up and I'm going to read a little bit and I know that God is here and I'm not going to be lazy because there's a gem. I'm going to be like that woman that turned her whole house upside down to find that coin. Because there's joy when you found that treasure. So Lord, I want to ask Lord for us this morning, as we take communion, that we'd realize there's an open door into your presence for each of us. And it wasn't a way that we had to make, it's a way that Jesus made for us. And I ask Lord that our reading of your word will not just be because of tradition or because of this to do that, Lord, but that we'd realize that your word is alive and active. And there's so much that you want to do in our lives through your word. And it's in your presence that we get to read your word and spend time with you. And I ask, Lord, that a seed that has been planted in each of our hearts, or even if there's people here that are diligent in reading your word, I ask for a deeper desire even for them, God. Mm-hmm. That they go and they like, there's so much more. Mm-hmm. Lord, that we'd live like that. But thank you for making the way that we can get revelation, that we can have your word coming on the inside of us and transform us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm. darkness, my God, that is who you are.